Welcome back, um, Year 7s, to this, your next uh, video um, on um, medieval kings and queens. Um, uh, just, just to introduce and kickstart the video off, uh, just to explain, I'm not actually a cat, I am actually a teacher. I can't get the filter off, so I'm just going to run with it. So today we're going to be looking at um, King John, uh, the, the famous, the infamous, the um, much slighted uh, by history King John. Um, was he a, uh, a good or a bad king? Many uh, historians often refer to him as an evil man or a monster. The way he's depicted in movies is quite uh, bad as well. Today we're going to be looking actually uh, putting him on trial. So, uh, first things first then, just to get the issue started, okay, uh, is we've got a video clip here, um, which I'd like you to have a look at, this video clip down here. So copy and paste that into YouTube um, or whatever it is, you, uh, however you need to access this. Um, so, um, and then play the video back. Um, the video's got at various points um, questions which you need to answer. So you'll need to pause it where appropriate. Okay, answer those questions, write them down. Okay, when you've done that, come back to this presentation. So um, we have Simon Seabag here. He is going to be our first historian we're going to be looking at. And he said this about uh, John. Uh, King John lost most of his empire, broke every promise he ever made, dropped his royal seal in the sea, impoverished England, murdered his nephew, seduced the wives of his friends, betrayed his father, brothers and country, foamed at the mouth when angry, starved and tortured his enemies to death and lost virtually every battle he fought. Now, um, you know, regardless of which um, standards we're judging him by, we could say he is monstrous by today's standards, but even by standards of the day, that is, you know, certainly quite a poor reflection on him. So pause the video here, and I want you to write down all the various reasons that Seabag gives for John for being evil. Pause the video, come back when you're ready. So uh, next up, we've got another brief, this one's a very, very brief video clip, okay? Um, play this, uh, pause this video, um, play this video clip here, uh, come back and then list all the various reasons why King John was such an unpopular king. So we do need to be careful though. So first and foremostly, we need to, First of all, we need to get our heads around the fact that John is very much um, being judged by the standards of today, what we see as a good or a bad person today, okay, or even a good or a bad king today. You know, are we thinking about what kind, what a good or a bad king was like at that time? You think back to King Richard, last lesson, okay, history portrays him very favorably and looks at him as being a hero. You know, every, every England football supporter up and down the country sees him as the greatest man who ever lived, okay? But he did some terrible things, some deplorable things. So the issue we need to be bear, bear in mind is that most um, historical depictions about John, okay? Oh, that's the wrong one. That's not a highlighter, is it? Okay. Most historical depictions about John uh, relied too much on what the chroniclers said. Okay, we're going to be talking about the chroniclers uh, in a bit. Okay, now the chroniclers were monks writing at the time. Okay, all right, but bearing in mind there weren't any historians writing at the time. The only people who could read or write were the monks. Okay, and of course they were led by the Pope. The Pope in Rome was their, their boss, and they saw the Pope in Rome as being in charge. 
and John famously fell out with the Pope. He had a massive row with the church and a massive row with the Pope. OK, so, you know, it could be argued when we look at the chroniclers, although they are a primary source, some people might consider them to be biased and, and lacking an objective. OK, and the problem with Victorian historians, so many historians writing at the time of the Victorian age, OK, they relied a lot on these uh, chronicle sources. So very early historians, OK, say 100, 200 years ago, use these chronicles. Um, but it might, we need to be very careful about uh, our sources and our use of sources here. But it is without a doubt that John did commit many crimes during his time. But that's kind of what kings did back then. Yeah, you were the king. You could do what you liked. Yeah, that was the whole point. Yeah, a, a king did what they liked. They were king. They were almost expected to make their own rules and not follow the rules of others. You know, he murdered his nephew. He did seduce the wives of his friends. He betrayed his father, his brother, his countries. He starved and tortured his enemies to death. He lost most of his empire in France. Yeah, remember, kings at that time were French. They, they came from Normandy. They spoke French. English as a language didn't exist. OK, and that kings of England were primarily barons from France. That was their, their most important role. England was just a cash cow. It was just something that they got money so they could fight wars in France. He lost virtually every battle he fought. And back then, remember, a king was judged very much on how good they were with a sword leading armies. He impoverished England. He milked it clean of taxes. But then so did Richard. And we don't see Richard as being this man who starved and bankrupted England. He treated his enemies cruelly. But hey, that's what kings did. So did Richard. So did William the Conqueror and just about every medieval king right up until almost Henry VIII. OK, and he made his barons pay enormous. Now, this is the big issue here. That's the real problem. Irrespective of all of this other stuff, the barons at the time, yeah, they were really the power in England. And if you upset your barons, then people are going to be, you know, people are going to look very unfavorably on you. Right, this, um, this worksheet is a PDF. It is attached along with this uh, Show My Homework article. Okay, print it off, uh, you know, and do whatever you need to do with it. Okay, uh, or copy and paste these into Word or whatever. Okay, so look at each one of these events in turn and then grade it out of 10, okay, with, yeah, one being quite mild and 10 being really bad, okay? So, for instance, if you think that actually, where's my pen here, okay, um, if you think that perhaps um, this issue with the Pope is not particularly bad, give that a one. Oh, it's still yellow. Okay, let's change that color back. Uh, okay, so give that one. If, however, you think rebelling against your father and his brother is the worst, give it a 10. Okay, try and give a variety here. Don't give them all ones and all tens. Okay. If you want to extend and push your history learning a little bit farther, okay, you could write a brief sentence against each, each grading, explaining why you gave it that grade, okay? You wanna challenge yourself further. Okay, pause the video here, have a go at this, and then come back when you're ready. So, what do these chroniclers say, these, these monks? We're gonna be looking at these chroniclers today. We're gonna to be looking at Roger of Wendover, uh, Matthew Paris, Ralph of Cogger School, and Gervais of Canterbury, nice, nice French name there, so I bet he's very Norman, okay? But let's, let's hear what Roger's got to say first. Let's look at Roger. 
Okay. So Roger of Wendover, he was a monk. In 1209, John had a clergyman crushed under a stone of lead and the, the clergyman died an agonizing death. He ordered a Jew should have a tooth knocked out daily until he revealed where his treasure was hidden. A very, very uh, medieval that. Where is your treasure? Yeah, tell us where your treasure is. And John also let people go who murdered priests. Yeah, but remember, he's having a big yeah, argument with these clergymen. Okay, he's having a big fight, big with the Pope. Okay, so Roger Wendover is going to be very biased. So we've got another one, Matthew Paris, the monk Matthew Paris took over from Roger of Wendover and creating the Chronicles, and he took a lot of Roger's work and revised it. John was a tyrant. He was a wicked ruler who did not behave like a king. He was greedy and took as much money as he could from his people. Hell is too good for a horrible person like him. He threatened to slit the noses and to pluck out the eyes of the Pope's messengers. Again, quite an unpleasant account, but arguably a very, very biased one. Gervais of Canterbury. He called John soft sword. Okay, what do you think that word means? Soft sword. Okay, have a go at, at, at explaining that word soft sword. He also told the story of the effect of John's row with the Pope, bodies of the dead, whether ordinary or religious people, could not be buried in consecrated ceremonies, but only in godless places. Yeah. So if you sided with the Pope, or what, if you essentially, if you sided with uh, uh, the church, you weren't allowed to be buried in a graveyard, you were thrown out with the garbage. Gervais also said the whole of England was taxed heavily. John imprisoned many, many bound them in irons, and released them only in return for money. Ralph of Coggerskull, monk and abbot of Coggerskull in Essex, said, okay, uh, that he was really angry about John's treatment of Arthur, whom he blinded and cascade, castrated. Okay, what an unpleasant word there. If you're feeling up to it, Look it up, but be careful. So brief research task, okay? Answer these questions here. So go back over the previous slides, okay? And write down what the chroniclers say about John. To extend your learning a little bit further, okay? You could do some research online and find out who these chroniclers were, find out a little bit about them. To really challenge and push yourself to the higher grade, if you're really trying to get a high grade, I want you to comment on the reliability of these various sources and explain whether you think they're reliable or not. Pause the video here, have a go, come back when you're ready. So on the other hand, let's have a look about what the historians, okay? More modern historians, what do they have to say about John? So we're writing much, much later now. So it is a, it is a secondary source. OK, but hopefully might be a little less biased. So Ralph Turner said that John should be seen as not a monster of superhuman evil, but merely as a twisted and complex personality. Aren't we all complex? He is a man with ability and potential for greatness. OK, whose own flaws prevented him from living up to the reputation of brother. And that was and that's all the, the, the key point here is, is that we're judging John by by Richard's standards, the man who led the Crusades. Yeah. OK, the man who was this consummate warrior. Right. And back then in medieval times, you were a good king if you were good with a sword. Yeah. If you killed your own enemies, that made you a good king. Right. That's what made a good king, not the fact you were clever, intelligent or you managed your country well or you cared about people. But just because you could put on armor, jump on a horse and kill people, that's what made you a good king. So pause the video, answer this question here. What reasons does Turner give suggesting that John was a, a bad king? So after the Second World War, 
Okay, so much more recently, historians started to question the accuracy and reliability of the chronicles, began to place more emphasis on these pipe rolls. We're going to be looking at the pipe rolls later, what the pipe rolls are, okay, and um, looking at them a little bit later on. So Warren said that the portrait of John emerges from Paris is even further removed from reality than Roger of Wendover, okay? Basically, what he's saying is, is that these chroniclers are talking rubbish, yeah, and they're making it up as they go along. But because of the account is more lively, colourful and readable, basically it's a more fun read, people remember what Paris wrote, and even though it's exaggerated, Warren concluded John had the mental abilities of a great king, but the inclinations of a petty tyrant. Okay, uh, it's got some keywords for you there. Petty and tyrant. If you don't know what these words are, pause the video, look them up, write them down and come back when you're ready. So J.C. Holt writing in his very brief pamphlet, saying John was an energetic ruler, thoroughly intelligent and never to be rivaled in the medieval period. High praise indeed, very high praise. Yet he criticised the chroniclers, stressing they were monks and only bad mouthed John because he'd argued with the Pope of the time. I'll also point out the monks like Wendover Paris wrote after John's death. So they're not even particularly contemporary primary sources. They're not writing at the time John was alive. They're writing after John's death. So again, we are still calling into question the reliability of these sources. They were free to be more critical knowing how badly the rain ended. So these pipe rolls were, okay, all right. So historians in the last 70 years have been using these pipe rolls, okay, rather than the chroniclers. And if you want to extend and push your, your history a little bit further, pause the video here, go away and do some research, find out what exactly what these pipe rolls are, okay. But they say, these pipe rolls say he was a good administrator, okay, and he was not as lazy as chroniclers say. Modern historians, okay, often criticize these chroniclers. Now we're talking about, so this story given back here of, yeah, of this clergyman crushed, crushed to death by a stone, okay? So let's, have a look at that story and under more recent examples. So this, this tale of Geoffrey of Archdeacon of Norwich. Apparently he was crushed to death, supposedly taken place in John's reign, but Geoffrey became bishop nine years after John had died. Okay. So highly unlikely that this has actually happened or that John even did it. OK, so that so some of these chroniclers actually are lying to make the story more exciting and more interesting, or maybe to gain favour with the Pope. Um, further arguments for the defence of John. He was very unlucky to be alive at the time when there were two other very strong rulers. OK. What if John had won his battle with French and therefore didn't need to attack the people? Would there have been the revolt? He was also unlucky, okay, his brother Richard had spent so much money on the Crusades, okay, so really didn't leave much money left for, for John to actually run the country with. Final task then, is for you to essentially answer this question here, yeah. Was King John, was he a villain or a victim of history? Was a bad man, okay, or a good man painted bad in the light of, his style, of history by historians? Okay, in order to, I've got a brief couple of uh, pointers here. Look at both sides of the argument. Look at the fact he was a villain and a victim. Look at both sides. Explain, okay, 
your answer referring to the sources provided. So if you're talking about whether he was a villain or not, you could perhaps use some of the chronicles. If talking about whether he's a victim or not, you could look at some of the more modern uh, portrayals of John. Okay. Right, so that's the end of the video. Go away, complete this task, and submit it to me when you're done. Thank you very much.